اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم و صلی اللہ علی سیدنا محمد و آلہ الطیبین الطاہرین اللہم صلی علی محمد و آل محمد انہا لیلہ و انہا الیہ راجعون ریسپیکٹڈ ویورز السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ today or tonight inshallah we are going to discuss about the martyrdom of imam amirul mu'minin ali bin abi talib salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi and this is a continuation of our last episode where we were talking about the life of imam amirul mu'minin in kufa and in that city of kufa where he attained his shahada so today we want to talk about uh, what happened actually when Imam Amirul Mu'minin was struck by the sword of Abdurrahman ibn Mulji, the Salah, what happened at that moment, and then the day when Imam now was not well, he couldn't observe his fasting, what happened with his family, and then the visitation by the doctor, physician. And what did Ali alayhi salam left behind for his children and for the whole ummah? To discuss this program and this, uh, these points to today in this program, we have our dear, beloved Sheikh Hujatul Islam al Muslimin, Sheikh Mirza Abbas with us. Uh, most welcome on Thank this uh, program, sad program, Sheikh. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor to be with you be with the viewers and the lovers of Ahl Bayt salam, who are watching us and we all share the uh, sorrow Adam Allah wujurana wujurakum wa wujurakum inshaAllah bless us all on this commemoration of the martyrdom of the days of huzn and sorrow for Amirul Mumin, for the children of Amirul Mumin, for all of us inshaAllah and for Allah the Allah. Imam of the time Allah. we extend our condolences to the Imam of our time uh, for these days, uh, these sorrow days. Indeed, like as you said, uh, you know, uh, as we talked in our last episode, mm -hmm. that how he was struck and uh, there are different reports uh, in regards to whether it was uh, he was performing his ruku mm -hmm. and he was raising his head and the blow came. Was he performing sajda and he raised his head and the blow came? Uh, was it a jama'at prayer uh, that he was leading and while everybody were jama'at in jama'at and this man in jama'at, you know, attacked him. <laughs> and Amir al asked Imam Hassan to continue, not to break the jama'at. Mm. And uh, so these are the different reports, but obviously... What is certain is that it was in the halat of prayer. Indeed. In the halat of zikr, of subhan. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And uh, as we see that right after that, uh, they caught him. They caught Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. Mm -hmm. And they tie a cloth to the head of Amir al Mu'mineen as it was cut open. Subhanallah. Uh, and the whole masjid was was crying subhanallah and this was a very horrific you know uh, happening or event that have mm. taken place and everybody started shouting and the news reached to the house mm. of the daughter and of the children of Amir al-Mu'mineen and they were wailing and crying and lamenting and the body was taken out of the masjid of Kufa. It was hujum. Mm. And uh, when they brought Ibn Muljim, apparently they tied his hand. Mm. And look at Amir al muminin how alayhi. he responded to Salam his Allah. own killer. Salam you know, he asked him to cut him loose. You know, don't intimidate him. How much this man is careful about his own killer. And treat him normally, provide him food, don't mm. intimidate him. Yeah. Look at his face, he's pale. He's worried about him. Mm. This, this is 
typically Ali bin Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi he took uh, the whole event uh, he didn't take the whole event personally he didn't take it that this is between Abdurrahman bin Muljim and uh, I he took it now this is the time when I have to practice whatever I have learned to Habibi Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that you treat your enemy to the, to the utmost respect and make sure that your enemy even though he has done something bad to you don't be like him be you as the way Islam says I wish if all the believing men and women and all the humanity would learn from Ali bin Abi Talib Salamullahi alayhi. So now what you have mentioned is so horrific. Now we see this is masjid. People went to pray. While people are in jama'a or furada, it was the masjid. And Imam Ali alayhi salam is praying. Whether he's leading salah or he's praying alone. This is salah. This is masjid. How can someone think about killing ending the life of a servant of Allah by striking him with the sword while he's in salah. So can you see, Sheikhna, here there's, there's a very important thing to, for us to, to connect with what is happening now in our world, where we hear some people enter masajid and they blow the masajid. People enter into masjid, they kill the musallin, people who are praying. So Abdurrahman bin Muljim, as a figure of the time of Imam Amirul Mumin, that time and place, there are many Abdurrahman bin Muljim who are doing the same act of barbaric up to our days now. Yes. Isn't I, it? Yeah, totally. Very good point, Sheikhana. Very good point. To really take lesson. Mm. Right. Okay. Amirul Mumineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, for Shia is the first Shia Imam. Mm. For the Muslims, the fourth Khalifa. And he is treating his enemy this way. Subhanallah. He's been attacked by a terrorist. Mm. So are you going to be with the fourth Khalifa style? Or are you going to be with the, the enemy of the fourth Khalifa? Mm. The way they claim themselves to be the followers of the, of the Salaf, mm. followers of... So look how you're behaving. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Right. Salamullahi ala Ali ibn Abi yeah. Talib. And the exact words and uh, the way he said, don't intimidate. Yeah. Don't intimidate. This, this is a prisoner now. Don't intimidate him. Feed him the nice food. Untie him. Treat him well. And then Amirul Mumineen said a very important statement. This is after he was hit by Abdurrahman bin Muljim and his sword that he deserves to be cast. Laanatullahi alayhi. There is no doubt about it. He is mal'oon. Yeah, that ah. is between him and God. Of course. You know. Of course. He is mal'oon. However, he did it. He, Imam Amirul Mu'minin said, so long as a human being, he deserved to be treated as a human. With humane, treat him. Now, Imam Amirul Mu'min, when he saw, can you imagine now, yeah? Beloved Amir. The one who was loved by the Holy Prophet, by Mu'minin, by believing men and women. People were shocked. How can the Imam be hit while he's in Salah? So here now, he saw. Allah gave him the strength to speak. And he said, if he, if I am going to die because of the heat which he hit me, the struck which he struck me, then you hit him exactly with one strike because he didn't hit me more than that. And if I'm going to live, if Allah will allow me to live, then this is between me and him. Don't interfere. Yeah. This is Amirul Mu'mineen. Salamullahi alayhi. And then indeed they took Abdurrahman bin Muljim to a good place to keep him, to see the way, uh, the things which unfold for Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Now, I want us now to, to, to look at a few things here. Number one, there is a narration which says that the people of Kufa, they had a voice from the sky. And according to some, they say that this was the voice of the angel, could be Jibrail, could be someone else, that Kutila Amirul Mu'mineen. 
Imam Amir al has been killed because of the sword. So now can you imagine the one who came to establish justice, peace, learning center for Muslims in Kufa. Now all the people are knowing that he's been hit, he's been injured. And if you look at the sword which was used, as you said in the last program, that the sword was dipped in a poison which could kill many people. And this sword was used to hit the head of Imam Amir al-Mu'minin, and it was open. Now, you look at Amir al-Mu'minin now, they are carrying him, they take him to his family. I don't know, what can we say about the family? Yeah. Yes, uh, as you said about this voice, there's a, an extension of that. They also say that the minaret of hidayat, mm. of guidance, mm. have been broken. Mm. You know, the Amir al Mu'minin have been you know, slaughtered and, 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 and killed. Yes, they took the, you know, the, because Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam was loved by all. You know, the orphans, they say that he was the father. Mm. You know, feeding the poor. People sometimes not even recognize him. You know, that it was this man who took care of him because they mm. realized that nobody came tonight to give. La who was this man? He said, this man. So everybody gathered near the house of Amir al-Mu'minin. The mm. whole Kufa is near the house of Amir al-Mu'minin. SubhanAllah. And they say that Amir al-Mu'minin was in the state of consciousness and unconsciousness because of the pain, because of the injury. Mm. And he was waking to consciousness and he was giving wasiya. Mm. He was speaking to children, and in this state, when they give him food, he would ask, have you fed? Allahu Akbar. <laughs> His enemy. Yeah. Have you fed Ibn Mulchim? Subhanallah. You know, what can you say to Salaam this man? Allahi Ali. Salaam Allahi so Ali. much. I mean, when, I mean, leave aside the enemies. Mm. Now we talk about, you know, the terrorists, you know, they are catching them, they are putting in prison. Leave aside them. We are reaching to the point where Mu'mineen and Mu'mineen have ikhtilaf. Yeah, where Allah. family members have ikhtilaf. Mm. They have reached to the state of defaming each other. Mm. In the state of animosity. Cursing each other. Hitting each other. Mm -hmm. Physically hitting each yeah, other. Allah. For and, petty issues. Yeah, for petty issues. And Amir al who is Haq? Mm. On the opposite is complete darkness and batin. Indeed. And how human, Subhanallah. in a human way, in the respectful way, you know, we should, we should be ashamed. Subhanallah. And especially those who call themselves Shia to Ali. Yeah. The followers of Ali, the lovers of Ali. Now, Imam Amir al as we understand now, he was taken to his house. And uh, there is one narration. Subhanallah, there, there are a lot of points here to, to, to look at and to learn from. One narration which says that uh, the love between the love of a father to his children was so much so that, uh, especially the daughters, when Amirul Muminin was carried by Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, Sayyida Shababi Ahlil Jannah, and now Imam Amirul Muminin is taken near his house and he reaches the house. And he says to Imam Hassan and Hussein, allow me to walk. They say, Baba, your condition <laughs> is like this. How can we allow you to walk? He said, because I don't want to see Sayyidah Zainab. <laughs> ya Allah. I don't want Sayyidah Zainab to see me in, in this way. Yes, his father, you know, who is so strong all the time, because this, this strength for Zainab was Ali, you know, because the daughters have lost their mother in a very young age, and father was the main sort of, you know, point of reference for them. Indeed, Hazrat Umul Banin took care of them and brought them, you know, brought them up, but father was father. You know, mm. and, and at the same time, as you said, you know, the father have a very special place for the daughters. You Subhanallah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, can you imagine Ali alayhi salam now enters the house and Sayyida Zainab looked at the father, the father, the head is open because of the heat of Abdurrahman bin Mulji. Subhanallah. How difficult it was for Sayyida Zainab, for Umm Kulthum, for Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, and all the companions, it was very difficult for Amirul Mu'mineen. And this is in the holy month of Ramadan. Ramadan. Yeah, and they were all crying. And, and on the other hand, he was saying that, you know, don't cry. You know, the time have come where I will be meeting Zahra. Salamullah. <laughs> I will be meeting Rasulullah. It's difficult, wallah, difficult. عظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم وأجور المؤمنين والمؤمنات بمصابنا بأمير المؤمنين عليه السلام. Now you look at Ali عليه السلام even though he was in this state he could remember his enemy he could remember his duty and one of the duty is to advise his children and now he talks to his children he gives them this wasiya a phenomenon wasiya a will which according to the Holy Quran we have to leave behind our wasiya because why? We have to inform the people of whatever we want them to take care of. And maybe it's the time we need to look at this wasiya in order for us to remember Ali alayhi salam. How about, do you remember the report of the doctor coming in? It was called the Tabib. Yes, indeed. Uh, the Tabib was called and uh, a, a physician came, subhanallah, According to one narration, it says in those old days or uh, the days when the medical facilities were not like our days now, a tabib, a doctor, physician came and uh, he said, let me look at Amirul Mu'mineen. And he entered the house. Amirul Mu'mineen, Ali alayhi salam, was lying on the bed and the physician came. He looked at the injuries. He said, this is too big. But then he brought a thread, like a thread which we use to, 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 uh, to tie our clothing. He took the thread, a specific one, and he measured it by making it enter into the wound of Amirul Mu'mineen. And he took it out and he said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, O family of Ali. There's nothing I can say except now prepare the funeral for your dad. Salamullahi ala Ali. They tied a cloth to the head of Amir al Mumineen and they say that because of the effect of the poison, the face color of Amir al Mumineen have turned yellow. <laughs> and it transferred to the cloth as well. Yeah. You know, the cloth also became yellow because of the, the poison, the effect of the poison that was on Amir al Mumineen. Yeah, this was a difficult moment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and even in this, he because there were people outside the house worried about their Amir, you know, their Imam, their you know their father, and uh, and he made sure that he goes and sit with them Allah as well. Allah. They say, take me. They put a like a you know like a you know like a. Takht, like what do you call like a like a bed, bed kind of. They lifted that and they took him outside and he met people mm. and he spoke to them and you know saluni qabla an tafkaduni yeah. and asked them ask me before you lose me and uh, it really shows that how a patient should and how the family member should take care of people who wants to visit. The, the disease, the, the, the people who are ill. Sometimes we say that, oh, no, 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 the patient is very ill, mm -hmm. it's not good, the doctor said not to speak. We kind of block them, you know, from anything. No, Baba, you, know, you have to respect them. They have come to visit the ill person, give them, you know, and they also must respect the family mm -hmm. and the person who is ill. You know, they come there, they will pray, they will look at him and they will leave very quickly. They should do that as well. And the family also must update, must tell them, must inform mm. them in a very polite way. You know, I know their family, when the loved one is ill, is not in a very good situation. They are worried, but at the same time, they have to behave in a very 
ethical way indeed with others with allow them to pray allow them to come entertain indeed. them engage them and amir al mumin in that state he himself mm. said take me outside you know i would like to see i would like to meet them subhanallah they say milk the tabib mm. you know parents says give him milk milk is good for him and there was a line you know <laughs> salam allah ya yeah. Salam Even the orphans, you know, they, mm. they were running with the glasses of milk. They say, "My, our father is." Subhanallah. Ya Allah, truly speaking, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said, and this uh, could be the moment when you remember him when he said, "Ana wa Ali abawa hadhi al umma." I and Ali are the fathers of this umma. So you can see now the father is ill. But at the same moment, he's thinking about the affairs of the ummah. And the ummah is ready, even the fuqara are ready to come and take care of Amirul Mu'mineen. And I actually remember one of the companions when Amirul Mu'mineen was uh, in his house on the bed, deathbed you can call it. He said, please allow me to come and see my Amir. When he entered... And he looked at Imam Amirul Mu'minin the way you said his color has changed now because of the poison. The, 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 the yellowish could be seen, the color. And Imam Amirul Mu'minin, when he was talking to his companion, he said, he started crying and he said, I feel sorry for you. Ali alayhi salam said, La tabki, in nahal jannah. This is paradise because you can enter paradise without passing some stages including and specifically shahada. So Imam Amirul Mu'minin salamullahi alayhi, can you see, instead of people to calm him down, he was calming them, them down. down. Yes. Why? Because the father who is taking care of the ummah. And then the moment of leaving the wasiyah came, which is very important that he didn't forget about that, that I have to advise my children and the whole ummah, and maybe... If we can share some, uh, some points, short, points short, from this was here, will be nice. You know, as he says that, you know, to his close ones, this mm. is one of their, there are a couple of wasiyas uh, from Amirul Mu'mineen, but this is one of them which is after the uh, zarba, after yeah. the injury, you know, after the 19th, you know, 18th night, 19th, he, you know, he mentioned this. Obviously, the first thing that he mentions is, my advice to you is to be conscious of Allah. Allah. Is the taqwa. Mm. You know, be very. And this, he showed to be conscious of God Allah. by practically showing how to deal with people, mm. how to deal with enemies, how to deal with children. This is a reflection of that taqwa which Amir al mm. had. He is the Imam al muttaqin indeed. Mm. You know, he is at that forefront of being considered as, as taqwa. And, you know, the Ahl Bayt, you know, their actions are the Qur'an. Like, for example, you know, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولِهِ You know, mm. the wali of Allah, when mm. he gives the ring in ruku, mm -hmm. that ayah came after that. Surah Dahar, Surah Insan, mm. you know, where they give in the charity. So their actions sometimes becomes the Qur'an. Mm. And sometimes the Qur'an is 100% reflected in the Ahl Bayt mm. The Qur'an says, Alif Lam Mim Dalik Al Kitab. You know, Hudal Al Muttaqeen. Talking about the Taqwa. Amir al Mumin, the first thing Allah he says, Akbar. he says, Taqwa. Allah, mm. Allah, fit Taqwa. Mm. Allah, Allah. You know, it's about conscious of Allah and be steadfast in your deen. Mm. You know, to be steadfast in religion and deen. You know, this is very, you know, fascinating that this man who was steadfast mm. all his life, even after that, he's telling everybody that, you know, you, you, know, you should be steadfast in your deen. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, do not yearn for this dunya. Mm. You know, this was really amazing in regard to it, very special about Hazrat Ali alayhi salam, mm. about Amir al in regards to the dunya. Where he says, you know, he has divorced the world three times. Three times. So, yeah, mm. subhanAllah. And this, this, this is very strong that uh, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi, in, in his now state where he is in pain 
and uh, death is approaching him, he's reminding his family members to take care and to remember taqwa Allah, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be steadfast in their religion and not to yearn for anything for this dunya. Why? He said not only that, even if the dunya will want you, you don't go for dunya. Yeah. Why? This is a reflection of the hadith of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, that dunya is the source of all, hubbu dunya is the source of all the evils which are happening, the killing which is happening. Even if we go back to Abdurrahman bin Muljim, who attacked Amirul Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam, it was for dunya. He didn't do whatever he did for any other reason. Because Abdurrahman bin Muljim wanted to marry a woman and the woman said, my mahar, one of the things you have to kill Amirul Mumin. This is dunya. Imam Amirul Mumineen here, in his condition, he says, oh my children, don't go, don't yearn for this dunya. Even if the dunya will come to you, you make sure you are avoiding it completely. Why? Because what in, in, the, in the mind of Imam Amirul Mu'minin, if you go to dunya, to those aspects which will mislead you, then make sure you don't go for it at all. And subhanallah, look at the Holy Quran. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Give us, ya Allah, hasana good of this dunya and good of the akhirah. So Imam Amirul Muminina is reminding them about that. Dunya, if it takes you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't go for it. Hubbu dunya ra'asa kulli khatiya. Hubbu dunya ra'asa kulli khatiya. The love of this world is the head of all mistakes that a person can get into. So one has to be very careful and Amirul Muminin is is giving in this wasiyah mm. that to be wary of the dunya. No. You know, to be careful of the dunya. Just very quickly, dunya, I mean, not that one completely forgets in the sense that doesn't fulfill the responsibility that no. one have. One have to take care of one's responsibility towards oneself, towards mm. the family, towards... That is akhirah indeed. That's not the dunya. Mm -hmm. Dunya where is one forgets the hereafter. Ah, one forgets the hereafter. This point is very important because there are some people who may say, uh, why we hear Islam or some uh, shuyukh scholars talk about us not to go for this dunya. What do they mean by that? That meaning is very complete. That uh, dunya is where we are. This is the, the, the farm where we cultivate for our akhirah. Don't forget your portion of this dunya. So it's not the positive aspect. It is the negative one. Hubbu dunya, where you love the dunya, you are attached to the dunya, and you forget akhirah, you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you forget yourself. This is exactly what Amirul Mu'mineen says right. here. Do not resent anything you have missed in it. Do mm. not be upset. Oh, this thing, we lost it. We yeah. don't have this. Oh, you know, because a person resents about it, cry, cries about it, brags about the dunya. Yeah. You know, you know, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. It's making you depressed. Mm. That's something of the dunya you don't have. Indeed. Right? This point is very important. Where Amirul Muminin is reminding his children that whatever you lost it and whatever you miss it, don't feel so sad and attached to that which you have missed it, yeah? Because why? According to the hadith, the Holy Prophet says that uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned for you or decreed for you to have something, it will come to you. And if Allah decided, decreed that you will not achieve it, you will never achieve it. Even if the whole world will want you to achieve, but if Allah decided you won't, so don't go and feel remorse, resent for it while you have lost it. Yeah. Proclaim the truth, work for the next world, oppose the oppressor and support the oppressed. Salamullahi ala amiri al muminin ali alayhi salam. Work for the truth. And here is very important, haq. I remember again amiri al muminin salamullahi alayhi when it was the battle of Jamal, the battle of Kamal. One person came to him and he said, Amirul Mu'minin, I'm confused. 
I want to enter into this battle to fight for one group. But I see you one side, and on the other side I see Aisha, Umul Mu'minin, the mother of believers, the wife of the Holy Prophet, is fighting against you. So can I join you or can I join her? He came to ask Amirul Mu'minin. He says, work for the truth. Amirul Mu'minin said, don't look at me or don't look at her. We'll find where the truth is and follow the truth. When he was alive, he said that. Now he is about to die, he says that. Work for the truth. Subhanallah. Because when you go for the truth, then you will be able to know that this man is with the truth. And again, what the Holy Prophet said, Aliyun ma'al haq wal haqq ma'a Ali. Aliyun ma'al haq wal haqq ma'a Ali. Even at this stage, he is about to die. He reminds his family, go for the truth. And then, help the oppressed. Do not support the oppressor. Yeah. This is what we call human rights. Right. Today, the whole world is confused sometimes when you mention the names and the countries and so on and so forth. Imam Amirul Mumini says clearly, you support the oppressed. Whether that oppressed person is a Muslim or non-Muslim, support the oppressed. Do not support the oppressor. Yeah. This is a principle which will remain alive until the day of judgment. Right. Salam and it's not Allah. oppressed in the sense he's saying oppressed Muslims. Mm -hmm. He's an oppressed one. Ahsan. The one who is Muslim. Ahsan. The have-nots of the society. Mm. And on the other hand, today world we see that the have-nots are not counted at all. Mm. Only those people who are rich, mm. those people who are royal, mm. you know, they are considered the ashraf, you mm. know, they are considered, you know, uh, you know, the people make room for them, people take care of them, mm. but nobody take care of the poor ones, mm. you know, right? It's and very unfortunate to see the state of world today. All of the problem from little to big is because they are not implementing the true human rights and true human values and son, and you know, son. who have understood what humanity is indeed amirul mu'min was a person who understood mm. you know the the voice of human justice by george Oda. Mm. You, know, mm. you know he clearly says he was in a christian yeah he says that he knew everything subhanallah what a true human being is what true human laws human value human you know uh, you know uh, reality is and he is you know advising on that basis mm. And, and, and this statement, if you look at in Arabic, is when it says, Kunu khasma awna. So khasma by itself is like, be at war with the one who is the oppressor. And the one who is oppressed, make sure you help him. Mm -hmm. And truly speaking, he didn't mention religion or creed or whatever. He said, so long as you find someone who is madhulum, help him. Yes. That one who is yeah. oppressed. The one who is dhalim, who is the oppressor, you be against him. Don't just say, ah, because he is educated, he is related to me, because he has this status, even though he's dhalim, but he's from my tribe, my nation. Amirul Mu'minini, I says, no, that's not the principle. The principle is find who is dhalim, who is the madhulum. Help the one who is madhulum, because this is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is, it is something which we need to, to honor and to work for it. Salamu Allah yeah. alayhi. And also, I mean, it's this, this oppression is, could be in many forms. Mm. And the oppressed ones could be in many forms. Like, for example, you know, we see that the children are being oppressed because of what they've been bombarded with unnatural or you know something that is not you know in the nature mm. of insan in, in a form of education mm -hmm. in a form of games in a form of culture you know they've been you know sort of imposed mm. these secular values these secular culture is being imposed upon them mm. you know so the oppression could be in any form indeed and helping the oppressed ones you know and we should have means of helping the oppressed ones you know, through speech, through consolidation, through giving them time. Mm. Maybe at the workplace, you know, there is, the, the, you know, the oppressor, is, there's no tag. Yeah. You have to discern the situation. Indeed. 
حق and باطل where is the حق and then support the حق mm. you know and usually we tend to see that those who have the حق they are always oppressed you know the tyrants you know we have seen the pattern mm. time and time again indeed either that be today whether by the time of pharaoh indeed you know the the mazloom you know are usually on the حق it's true you know and they are they they've been crushed and they've been oppressed mm. then i advise you and all my children my relatives and whosoever receives this message to be conscious of allah to remove your differences allah and to strengthen your ties mm. removing differences ikhtilafat mm, 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 mm. full of ikhtilafat that we have this is the wasiyah this is the night of amir al mu'minin look at us look at our community look at our house look at our affair remove this unity yeah to remove your differences differences ikhtilafat your differences your ikhtilafat your differences she, and Nassau, strengthen your ties yeah sorry shekhna for for interruption here uh, this reminds me about the aya wa atasimu bi hablillahi jami'an wala tafarraqu this is amirul mu'minin alayhi yes. salam remove yeah. your differences yes make sure you work together why because by doing so there is strength otherwise if we are divided and uh, we are fragmented we will be easily we will be defeated easily and nothing will go ahead and followers of amirul mu'minin they need to remember this wasiya of ali salamullah alayhi now yeah. yeah and also he talks about strengthening ties mm. you know now we have to look at how can we strengthen ties maybe you know iftar maybe invitation maybe going to their house maybe attending their you know their 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 invitation and inviting them there are different ways of strengthening jamaat prayer going to mm. the center you know programs you know this has how you know uh, we strengthen, we strengthen our, ties. our ties with each other sure. speaking to each other you know communicating with each other you know i heard your grandfather mm. rasulullah sallallahu, sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam says reconciliation of your differences is more worthy than all prayers and all fasting allahu akbar allahu you know, silatu rahm salamullah alayh you know connecting the kin yeah allah is that important than prayers and fasting They, and and this is who Amir Amir Amir. who knows the value of prayer subhanallah who knows the value of fasting allahu akbar what is fasting and what is prayer who who knows better it is amir al mu'minin he will know better and Salam then he Allah. is not saying i have heard hmm. my your grandfather i have heard rasulullah if, if it is hadith he is narrating directly from the Rasul. holy prophet sallallahu yeah. alaihi wa alihi and it is yeah. that i had from the holy prophet and and he says from your grandfather reminding them that it is your grandfather it's not me yeah. i heard from him yeah. that uh, islah that al bayn afdal min amat al salat wa siyam yeah. islah to bring reconciliation yes, between him. two people who are fighting yeah. they have problems is better than all prayers and fasting, fasting. Yeah. all prayers and fasting yeah wa islah that al bayn it's not like when we hear two people are fighting whether they are relatives or from the same community we try to put petrol on that fire yes to cause more trouble yeah. he says no even if you are about to pray but if there is is chance for you to bring islah reconciliation go for that because that is better than all the prayers and fasting, and fasting. look at amirul mu'minin he takes us to the different level because he knows there are those who are we call them normal standard muslims when they pray and they fast they think that this is everything we can do islah that al bayn we can bring in reconciliation we can help the humanity he says no salah is something salam is something but reconciliation it, it's something which we need to work for it because it's so important a person will never uh a person will never uh, extend or will never take the step towards reconciliation he will never do that mm. uh, if he is judgmental ahsan if ahsan. he is judgmental mm. 
then obviously he will he will create ikhtilafa mm. differences he will take side yes he will take side oh he's like that he's like that right and our communities have become like that mm, oh he's not religious oh he's religious oh he does this he does that mm. you know we are just pointing fingers on others sure and saying that oh they are like this mm. we mm. are mm. passing judgments unfortunately or other people unfortunately, unfortunately. Yeah. and if once we pass judgment how can we see that isla is very important mm. Mm. and and actually there are many hadith to support what uh, we are talking about here i remember one which says from a imma of ahlul bayt alayhi salam one of the imam alayhi salam says if someone comes to you who wronged you and he said he said something bad from your right ear and he, then he turns to your left ear and he said please forgive me sorry forgive me you have to do that why because a person may change and within our communities we have that that people may do something wrong but when they come to us and if you want to do islah that il bain we need to remember this because it's very important to bring the whole ummah together in order for them to be united and especially at the time of ghaiba of imam alayhi salam where we are in need of all of us coming together not only that even if the people who are fighting are not related to us he says islah that il bain yes reconciliation reconciliate yeah. people right. because we can create a human humanity which is on the basis of peace and the world will be a peaceful place right. definitely Mm. Fear Allah in matters concerning orphans, Allahu yateen. Allahu Akbar. It's very important. Allahu Akbar. This is Ali alayhi salam. Yes. You know, on the top of the list after Islam, Zat al-Bayl and Taqwa, you know, and being steadfast in deen. You he know, mentions he says, orphans. Yeah, orphans, orphans. yateen. Why? I mean, you know, there could be other aspects he could have mentioned. Mm. You know, uh, he could have mentioned about I don't know prayers about fasting about you know other things right but he, first thing he was a yatim you know this reminds me about the hadith of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam which he says about orphans ana he says ana wa kafilu yatim ka hatain fi jannah I and the person who takes care of your team will be like this in paradise yeah, subhanallah like yeah. this he, may, he he raises the two fingers will be like this in Jannah, meaning will be too close. And not only that, you see a surah in the Holy Quran, short surah, very important surah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Araita Ladi Yukadibu Bidin. Have you seen the one who belies the Qiyamah? The one who says Qiyamah will not be there. There is no judgment day. Araita Ladi Yukadibu Bidin. Do you know him? Have you uh, considered about him? فَذَٰلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ He's the one who doesn't take care of the orphans. Look at Imam Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam says, you make sure you take care of the orphans. Why? Quran says if you want to know someone who belies Qiyamah is the one who doesn't take care of the orphans. Imagine orphans. Why? Because orphans, they have lost a father or a mother or both of them. They need rahmah. Rahmah of Allah is there. That mercy of Allah is there. But we as believing men and women, we need to make sure we are taking care of them. They need that fatherly figure, motherly figure to be shown with love and sympathy, to be taken care of orphans. And that's why Imam Amir al in this moment where he's in painful, he talks about orphans. Yeah. Subhanallah. And, and look at this. He attaches this and he says, do not forget their interest in the middle of yours. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. I am busy shopping. I am busy making a trip, mm. vacation, ziyarat, mm. buying food, takeaway, sitting with family. I'm busy with myself mm. and I'm preoccupied with all of this, buying clothes for myself, sure. thinking about myself and my children. Mm. Sadaqa, okay, you know, homes, okay. Do not forget them in the middle of your affair. I, when I, you know, first to myself, I'm mm. speaking to myself. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm going to buy something, 
or you know, I should, this is some sheher for Asal our for I our should really think. This is what Amir al muminin says. And this should come in our regular habit. Ahsant, ahsant. The whole community should become ahsant. like that. All of us should become like that. Ahsant. Okay, and we teach our children like that too, so that when they grow up, you know, they are buying a shirt, okay. You know, Another one remember for, for your team. Yeah, or maybe I'll buy not that expensive, I'll buy a little bit, I'll put a box Allah. in the house, they put, you know, for Indeed. orphans, remembering orphans all the time. And every time there will be orphans, there's no any time where we can say there's no any orphan so we can forget. And especially them. now, look at they what's happening with the Muslim land, with yeah, the, with, with with everywhere, famine yeah. and sure. you know, you know And it's so sad, so sad to say that sometimes, unfortunately, th this is, I'm sorry, Sheikhna, to say this is a shame to, to so some who are known as Muslims, some Muslims who don't pay attention to the orphans, the way Imam Amirul Muminin says here, I know in many cases where there is war in the so-called Muslim lands, where non-Muslims have taken care of the orphans of Muslims. Yes. And Muslims are busy. Imam Amirul Muminin is reminding Salute us. Salute to them. Yeah, you know, really, exactly. Indeed, you know, you know. Because that's humanity. Yeah. And yeah. another thing They which have is, opened their borders, yeah. you know, for them. They are taking care of them. While Muslims are closing While their Muslim borders. While Muslims are closing their border and donating money to the zoo. Allah. <laughs> you know, we hear this sheikh donate this much La money hawla, to hawla, save hawla, the zoo hawla, animals. Hawla. So it's good, it's good charity, humanity, mm, insaniyat. Mm, but mm. there should be some balance. Human being. Yeah, insan. And this is yeah. Amirul Muminin alayhi yeah. salam, the father of the ummah is yeah. reminding us. And another thing which is very important, we remember from this point, Ali alayhi salam says, Yatim, make sure you remember them. Now, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, and Anna wa kafilu liyatim kahatayni fil janna. He mentioned this yes, hadith. Yeah. And in another hadith, he says, "Afdalul buyuti inda Allahi baytun fihi yatimun mukram." The best, one of the best houses in the eyes of Allah, is the house where there is an orphan who is being taken care of. Subhanallah. It means that he's encouraging Rasulullah is encouraging us to take the orphans and to make them to be part and parcel of the community. Yes. We shouldn't exclude them. We shouldn't look at them in the sense mm. that their level or yeah. their status is lower than us. This is wrong. Thank you very much for mentioning that point. Most this is something to reflect. This is, I always think about this. And maybe you can help me as well mm. here. See, we have organization, organizations who take care of the orphans, mm. very good. You know, Alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah, Allah jaza them, you know, give them reward. But one thing which I always tend to th reflect or think about is that, okay, we have this advertisement, you know, orphan, you know, with the picture of Yatim. Mm. You know, this is orphan, you know, help him. Mm, mm. You know, young age, you know, four years, five years, good looking, cute, mm. girl or boy or whatever. He grows up, he becomes 25 year, he goes on the internet. You see his picture, oh. you know, everybody begging. Yeah, Allah. What type of tasir and effect Very bad. will have on the orphan? Very bad. Amirul Mu'minin took care of the orphan in this fashion? No. By designating, okay, this is on the board. Mm. This is orphanage. We are saying take care of them like your own Indeed. children. Indeed. Not put a label there and say these are all orphan people. You exclude them. Yeah, you exclude them. And the first thing that you look at them is that, oh, you know, these are orphans mm. in one place all mm. together. Mm. Yes, we might be providing them laptops. We might be providing them computers. We might be giving them best education. But we are stamping on their forehead, you are an orphan. Are we supposed to take care of them like that? No, I agree with you totally. Because the hadith of the Holy Prophet says, one of the best houses in the eyes of Allah is the house where there is an orphan who is being taken care, yatimun mukram, the, uh, an orphan who is being honored. Honored, yeah. Mukram, honored, not just taken care, honored. So instead of us building houses, we say these are houses for orphans, they don't need buildings. They need love. They need to be with the family. They lost the father. They need someone to be there as the father. They lost the mother. They need someone to be as the mother. And that's why Imam Amirul Muminin is reminding the people who are near them, 
near him that be aware of the, the needs of the orphans. And another thing which is very important here, this is in the holy month of Ramadan. Meaning if you are having iftar, remember orphans, they don't have iftar. If you are planning, this is maybe 20 of Ramadan, 20th or 20th, 19th or 20th. 20th or, yeah. yeah, he's talking to people, remember, Eid is coming. You are going to buy for you. Remember orphans, they are in need of that. So we need to change our perspective, the way we look at orphans. We need to bring them closer. Even the Holy Quran says clearly, in the ayah which talks about marrying uh, multiple wives, yeah, according to uh, one uh, uh, understanding, is that that came before, because of taking care of orphans. Mm -hmm. Meaning what? Once you take care of them, don't exclude them. You c they are normal human beings. You can marry them. They can be part and parcel of the society. And that's why Imam Amir al is reminding the family about taking care of the orphans and the whole community. Right. Mm. So there has to be a change in terms of the approach mm. in regards to taking care of the orphans. Indeed. You know, this is something that I would like to bring this and you as Jazakallah. well have supported Khair. and you Jazakallah. are saying the same thing to our viewers that they should really look into this. Yes, mm. they are good organizations and we, we go online, mm. oh, okay, this box for, I don't know, sacrificing a goat, this box for education, this box for orphan. Oh, we go there online, okay, okay, alhamdulillah, we go. Yeah. it's good, it's alhamdulillah. Mm. But, you know, something more should be done. We need to take, you know, in regards. Uh, yeah, bigger steps. Yeah. Fear Allah in the matters of concerning, fear Allah in your relations with your neighbors. Mm. Jiran. Your prophet often, once again, he mm. says about the prophet. You know, before he says, quoted the prophet. Mm. You know, this shows the, the, the love of Amir al muminin to the to prophet. This shows the humility and the humbleness mm. of true student mm. of Rasulullah. Mm. A true student, mm. a true companion of Rasulullah. Where he remembers the prophet again. You know, he says, the prophet often recommended them to you so much so that we thought he would give them a share in inheritance. Allahu Akbar. The, this is so important and especially at the time now where we live in the world which is full of materialism. And this, this uh, philosophy, materialism, where we think about material more than humans, we come to know that if I have my house and my neighbor is near me, even if he dies hunger or he doesn't have anything to help him, I will not pay attention because why I need to pay attention to my needs only. Imam Amir al Mumin says, take care of your neighbor because Rasulullah used to talk about the neighbor. And the Holy Prophet has mentioned in his hadith, Jibrail used to come to me to remind me about the neighbor until I thought he will inherit from me our neighbors. We should take care of them. And, and uh, subhanAllah, all the religions which are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they talk about love thy neighbor. Unfortunately, the hypocrisy we see today, love thy neighbor, these so-called countries, yeah? You see one is closing the borders to their neighbors. Why? Because we want to enjoy all the fruits of this world. Forget about the neighbors, the killings, the sufferings which are happening to our neighbors. Are we really, truly, we have a sense of humanity to help one another? You can't see it. We need to change the idea. Not only just normal, uh, your fellow Muslims, but any neighbor. Because Imam Amir al mumin says, Rasulullah, he said about the neighbor, Al-Jar, Al-Jar. And then you connect, you remember to uh, Sayyida to Nisa al-Alamin, Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. When, so, <laughs> Yani sometimes you, do, you see things, this, these are not coincidence. Amirul Mu'mineen, he's, he's advising his children about neighbor. Zahra, Ummul A'imma, she is reminding the children by doing the dua for the neighbors and then prays for herself and the family. Hassan and Hussein alayhi they said, Mother, why we hear you praying for your neighbors more? 
and we don't see you first in, in your dua. He says, yeah, this is the way of Rasulullah, al-jar thumma dar Remember your neighbor before you remember yourself. And here is Amirul Mu'minin alayhi yeah. salam. Look, look at the hypocrisy of mm. the modern world today, or a rather postmodern period we are living in. Global world, mm. global village, one country, you know, world without borders. Mm. But I don't know my neighbor. It's true. <laughs> Unfortunately. You know, on one side, they are using these human values and principles that they talk about that they kind of just they're you know mm. to promote what to promote secularism to mm. promote you know all what's going on you know when you're not you know as you say mm. christianity also have love thy neighbor all religion talks about it but look at the western culture you know i don't know who my neighbor is i don't really care about my neighbor at mm. all we don't know mm. at all mm. 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 christianity is a christian country you know uh, to a greater extent mm. you know but still at the same time when we look at the culture and the value is is opposite yeah to yeah. those human values uh, yeah and this is something which uh, we need to advise our viewers whether your neighbor is a muslim whether your neighbor is not a muslim try to change your perspective some sometimes here yeah, to be fair to some people they say we try to be good to our neighbors but our neighbors they don't respond respond we say you discharge your duty to your to your neighbor you play your role if your neighbor doesn't pl play that role of being a good neighbor that's his or her problem but you have fulfilled your duty Right. And that's very important for us. So we think about the neighbor who is near our houses. And then, of course, we go beyond that. Yeah. Because why? The whole world needs to be taken care of. Definitely. definitely. Sheikh, now because yes. of the time, I don't know if we I can maybe we'll, mention only the, the yeah, bullet, the bullet points, points. And, and then, then probably we'll, we'll, we'll. Then Amirul Mu'minin talks about the Quran. Mm. You know, and he says, remain attached to the Quran. And very important point he says, and unfortunately, it is a reality for us today. Mm. And that is, nobody should surpass you in being intent on it or more sincere in implementing it. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Now, Muslims. We read yeah, Quran, we yeah. recite beautifully, yeah. but we implement. Yeah. This is and, Ali. And humanity, yeah. when we see other countries opening their borders to the neighbors. Mm. That's what implementing means. Sure. They are implementing of taking care of the orphans. Mm. They are implementing the teachings of the Quran. Sure. They have surpassed Muslims sure. you know, to implement. And this, this one point is very important. During the holy month of Ramadan, we have the tendency, the attitude of finishing from cover to cover recitation of the holy Quran. Finish from cover to cover, which is good. However, what we are supposed to do is to implement what we have recited, not just to get thawab. We need to implement, then the Quran will be high. Otherwise, we recite and recite, we get thawab. However, it doesn't help those people who are outside there and even ourselves. Salamullahi ala amir al mu'minin, he reminds us about the Holy Quran. Yes, we are very far. Mm. You know, I'm very far. You know, I yeah, should have said we, yeah, <laughs> You know, fear Allah in relation to your prayers, salat. Mm. Uh, it is the pillar of your religion. Mm. You know, uh, about salat. So first, about the Quran. It's very important that I personally sometimes uh, try to look at the uh, bringing the Quran into my life. You know, I have looked at it in this way. And it worked to a certain extent. I need to work a bit more on it. Mm -hmm. That is recitation of the Quran. I should look at as wajib. Mm -hmm. Just like how I'm approaching prayers. You know, I said to my mind, Salat is wajib, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what. For example, I reach home very late. It was I was driving. I didn't pray mm -hmm. on the motorway. Mm -hmm. I went home. I family. I forgot. I went to bed. About to sleep. Very tired. I remember. Oh. I forgot Maghrib and Shah. Mm. I will not sleep. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, no yeah. matter how much, whatever, half tired, mm. I can't, you know, sleep. 
you know, I will do wuzu with, in laziness and I don't know what I will recite even. But yeah, I, mean, I will make sure that I pray, Baba. You know what I mean? Wajib, you know. Mm. So if we make Quran like that, Allah. that I will recite today or every day, you know, 50 verse, one juz, or I will recite Surah Waqiya after my Isha, I will recite Sabahat, mm. which I should pray before I sleep. The Prophet used to pray the Sabahat. No matter how tired I am, Mm. After Isha prayer, I'll start reciting. Subhanallah. Every day I will recite, no matter what. So I should take this as like a wajib. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe, you know, because it's not like Salat wajib. Maybe if you are extremely tired, yeah. if you get extremely busy, then okay, I can kind of escape. Mm -hmm. But if I make it like wajib, wajib, like prayer, yeah. I approach the Quran in that fashion then I can easily bring the Qur'an. I have noticed this personally. Jazakallah khair al jaza. All this begins with our thoughts. It is in our mind. If we change the perspective, how do we approach the Holy Qur'an, then it will become a habit. But our habit is to neglect the Holy Qur'an. And the Holy Qur'an will co complain on the Day of Judgment. Subhanallah. And that Subhanallah. it will say, the uh, Rasul will complain that the Ummah have made this Qur'an forsaken, yeah. Mahjura. Yeah. So we do Hijra to the Holy Qur'an. And if we change our perspective and we value the book, of course, it will be like that. And the point of Salah, he says, فَإِنَّهَا عَمُودُ din. Salah is the pillar of your religion. In other words, what Amir al muminin says, if you break the Amud, you break the religion. If you make sure the Amud is strong, the pillar is strong, then the religion will stand as a strong religion. So right. we need to make sure Salah yeah. is there. No, he's, he's, he's so fascinating. Mm. You, know, you can see the intellectuality of this man mm. in this hour when about to die. Yeah. And somebody's when he's about to die, he will be very concise and very important points he mm. will mention. Mm. 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 And now he's not just focused on prayers and God and prayers and but humanity, Subhanallah. orphans, social neighbors, life. social life, Zatul Bail, you mm. know, connecting to the kin, mm. you know, mm. all of those things were first, huh? Yeah. Orphans, sure. neighbors, mm. you know, reconciliation among the people. Sure. These were first things. Sure. Yes, he mentioned taqwa and being steadfast, and then mentioned those things, and then comes to the aspect of. Mm. were first, Haq of people, community. Yeah, and actually some scholars are, and, and uh, those who have uh, a modern approach towards the tafsir of Islam, not tafsir of Quran, tafsir of Islam, they say that you look at the life of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in Makkah, he was talking about exactly what Amirul Muminin is talking about. And when the Holy Prophet migrated to Medina, he started talking about what we think that is Islam in terms of hukukullah. Uh, but in Makkah, you look at the verses of the Holy Quran which were revealed in Makkah, we need to implement that Islam of Makkah first before even going to Medina. And this is Islam which Imam Amirul Muminin is telling us that remember, there are issues which are hukukul ibad, rights of people, mankind, fulfill them first before even you think about hukullah and hukul nafs because this is the true Islam. Indeed. Uh, fear Allah in relation to his house, Baytullah. Mm. Do not abandon it as long as you live. If you should do that, you would abandon your dignity. Mm. You know, Hajj mm. is your pride, Subhanallah. is your dignity. Mm. You know, it's a reflection of that sort of unity and purity and symbol mm. you know of of the of the strength of god of labaik mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. answering to the call of god mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, if you don't mind can you just yes read i'll the read the, yeah persist in jihad in the cause of allah with your money your souls and your tongue maintain communication and exchange of opinion among yourself beware of disunity and enmity do not desist from promoting good deeds, Amar bil Maruf, mm. uh, and cautioning against bad ones, Nahi Anil Munkar. Mm. You know, should you do that, the worst among you would be your leaders, leaders. and you will call upon Allah do without du'a response and to du'a. get rid of them. Allahu Akbar. Uh, 
bad leader mm. will come to power if you stop doing amar bil maruf and nahi anil munkar. Mm-hmm. A practical example that we see today. Subhanallah. You know, if you promote all munkar, mm. you will have leaders like what we have. And then you do dua, Ya Allah, help us. Ya Allah, re- re- reply to our duas, answer our duas. Your duas will not be answered. answered. Mm. O children of Abdul Muttalib, do not shed the blood of Muslims under the banner. The Imam has been assassinated. So do not use this. Mm. You know, that because the Imam, yeah. we're going to kill you. We're going to usurp your property. So, and so careful. Mm. This man is so careful. Subhanallah. You know, advising them, you know, yeah. what you could do, for example. And then only the assassin should be condemned to death. Mm. And he does not stop here. Mm. And he says that if I die of the, the stab of his, kill him with one similar stroke. Do not mutilate him. I have heard the Prophet, peace be upon him, once again, Rasulullah, mutilate not even a rabbit dog. Subhanallah. And that's the basically the end, the of, end of his wasiyah. You know? Unfortunately, we don't have enough time. And I think uh, we have uh, mentioned a lot of important points. Insha'Allah Ta'ala will continue in the uh, coming po- uh, program in order for us to conclude and to, to see the things which are related to the death, the shahad of Imam Amirul Mu'mineen yes. and the burial and so on and so yeah, forth. Perhaps we can look at some of their points in Again, our next yeah, program, in our yeah. last program. Indeed, because we, we, we were yeah. rushing because yeah. of time yeah. and each point here requires a program by itself. Indeed, but thank you very much for mentioning all these important points regarding the wasiyah of Amirul Mu'mineen. Uh, unfortunately, we have to come uh, to this point of uh, bidding farewell to our viewers, but uh, by asking them, please, you go for the majalis to attend the shahad of Amirul Mu'minin. You listen to the majalis, but this year's majlis should be a different one. It, it should be a year where we focus on this wasiyah of Amirul Mu'minin, this will, in order for us to learn something. And the way Amirul Mu'minin liked it, for it to be practice, for it to be implemented in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, brothers and sisters. Allahu lakumul ajr. May Allah reward you for the shahada of Imam Amirul Mu'minin and accept your azah. May Allah reward you, accept your fasting, your dua. And insha'Allah ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your dua and your tears for shahada of Amirul Mu'mineen make this as aza to the Imam of our time. Wa akhiru da'wanan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Once again, we thank very much Sheikhna Al Aziz, Sheikh Mirza Abbas, Hujjatul Islam wal Muslimin. Jazahullahu khair al jaza. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Ali, 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 Ali,